Welcome to episode 5 in our Transfer Fever 2 Let's Play. We are playing in the hardest difficulty. You can find the parameter of this map so that you can play in the exact same one in episode 1. The link to that video will be in the video description below. And our goal is easy. We want to provide all of the resources to all of the cities, have a lot of high-speed trains connecting all of the cities, and of course have a lot of planes in the sky making as much money as possible in the meantime. So being a bit optimized and of course along the way I'm trying to share as many tips as possible. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. I'll read and answer them all. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, don't hesitate to press the red button below so you never miss another video and you also help support the channel. Just a few years have passed since the end of the last episode. I'm going to show you everything I did. First thing is that I've really expanded my track line over here to go even further, but also to prepare for other things. Starting at the bottom, instead of only two tracks, now we have three. Two will be focused on the fuel. Fuel going for this first city of Fort Wayne and fuel also going to the city at the top with two tracks, one up and one down, so that we can have as many trains as we want without any problems. And then the third track on this side is actually a two-way track with only one train to bring the materials that we need for the city. The city is still quite small, so we only need 40, for example, right now. One train can definitely do. In the future, we can always expand that into two tracks to have many trains if needed. And then I also expanded this station here significantly and go into configure to do so where the way I do this is I always have two tracks, then a platform, then two more tracks, then another platform. This way I'm going to use these tracks over here for the bricks going up and down. I'm going to use this for the fuel. There's one line coming here that will deliver the fuel that's needed for the city over here and then one line that will just continue up to go into the city all at the top. Before we continue on that line, let me show you indeed that as I said, we're starting therefore to deliver fuel. You can see it here. It goes into this station and then we have a few trucks that are coming, that are taking all of this fuel and bringing it to Port Wayne. I also actually had a bit of fun with Port Wayne, expanded the roads, started creating also those peripheric roads at the outside. And of course, I tried to put the truck delivery station over here in the corner where we actually need the fuel for now. When this starts to expand, we may need something else. And the road comes through here to avoid the residential area. Two other small tips over here. One is you need to make sure you actually have buildings, some buildings here like this, which it says with street access. Because if I didn't have a street access over here, my road over here wouldn't work. You know, you can't have a road that goes directly to the platform. So I would have had to have my road on this side where I did have the entrance, but you can add more. So I added one over here. I could add another one here if I wanted and many more in the future. So I put it here and then of course you have your road and you may be wondering why I put the station over here instead of putting it over here. Because if you remember in one of the previous episodes, I told you, you need to put the station as far as possible from where it's going to deliver, because the more distance, the more money you're going to make. And this is more profit that I'm talking about. Yes, you are making more income. You are also making a bit more maintenance costs. Um, so that sort of compensate a bit for it, but you're actually making a lot more income versus the additional maintenance. If you don't know about that, don't hesitate to check in the video description below some of my guides around how the money works. So anyway, as I said, the best is to put it over here. But in this case, it's actually smarter to put it here. Why? Because if I put it here, then I'm going to have a lot of traffic trying to cross this road where we already have a lot of traffic. So then they're going to have to slow down, stop, which this will not increase my income, but will definitely increase my maintenance. Versus over here, yes, I'm losing just a bit of money, but I actually don't have any traffic problems now. These ones will only go through here and these ones go through there. To be fully honest, I think I will probably make slightly more money, slightly more profit if it were here, but I just wanted to avoid any traffic. But then as we said, we're also going to deliver fuel higher. So uh, the route continues over here. You know, I didn't change any of this. This was already a two-way, so that's perfect. 
But then here, instead of only going into this station for sales Strat City, I started creating this new road over here, which as you can see, has a tunnel over here. Why a tunnel? Well, because we had a few routes. We have those two here, a third one over here. Um, and so instead of cutting all of those routes, making the, all those people stop and also making the thing a bit less pretty, I decided let's just do a, a tunnel. I'll show you just now how to do it, but as you can see, then the tunnel arrives over here. And once again, I'm using the same small tip where instead of putting the station uh, this side very close as far as possible, I'm actually putting it just on the other side of the road so that we don't have any uh, traffic jams over here. And then this station over here is going to then deliver into the city. Here again, I had to be a bit smart because if you look at where the fuel is needed, it is in the back of the city and here is the residential area. So if I just sent my trucks uh, on this route over here, they will definitely cross the residential area, creating a lot of traffic. So I decided to make a bit less money and in the future, maybe I'll make it even a bit better, but you know, to go around the city. And I'm also planning that the city will continue to expand over here. That's why I put the, the road a bit further. So anyway, the trucks will go now on this side and will deliver directly in the back over here. You can see the station is here. And then I'm going to use this waypoint over here to make them come back this way instead of again going through here. This way avoiding all pollution inside. This pollution, remember pollution creates a negative growth. We already have 20% right now, which is because of those guys and also because of a bit of a uh, buses, which will have to um, change in the future. But definitely wanted to avoid doing more. I haven't started it yet, so let's do it together. Always good to start with the cargo or the passenger wagon so that you see your limit uh, speed. This one is 50, but we actually have a higher at 80. We want to transport fuel, so it's this one, 80, 12. So let's put a few and then we can choose our locomotive to go with that. So we want 80, so this one is too slow for sure. This one is also too slow. These two are actually too fast. So it's either too slow or too fast. But then there is also, of course, the importance of power and tractive effort, where likely this one will be quite low. As you can see, 480, 500, 120, and then 700 and 100. So now let's check indeed. And then of course, you also need to see the price and the maintenance. I mean, this is 400 per year. This is 340, this is only 200. That's, you know, all of this you have to take into account. There's not a perfect choice to make. Um, you need to play a bit around. And in particular, by looking at if you want to transport whatever you want to transport, do you have enough tractive uh, power to reach speeds? This will also depend on if you have a lot of slops or not. Here, the good thing is we don't have that many slops. We do have a few. Uh, and this is where, again, the test and error comes into play. Now, the last thing to remember is this is a very long road. Actually, it could be quite good to have a very long train instead of several small ones. That's what we're going to do where I'm going to put and try with two of those locomotives and see how many I can put. OK, so with 60, we're already at mediocre. Yeah, so Probably what we're going to need to do is, as soon as we can, get a better locomotive. But for now, let's go with 60. Let's buy two and see how that works. Let me show you how you can create a tunnel when you know, the slope doesn't re really require the tunnel, but you want to do so. Is you click on this button here, or then you can choose if you go down, if you go up, um, and all of this and then of course you start tracking you can look you know on this view if you're going down enough you can go even more if you want those type of things this is how you do it but in this case we actually don't need that because we're just following along a route that has already been created 
I would love for quality of life uh, improvement in, in the next, uh, in one of the next updates of the game. Oops, sorry about that. In one of the next update of the game to be uh, that you can just double roads or triple roads or those type of things. But for now, I don't think it is possible. Um, while we're talking about updates, I actually do know that there is an update coming soon. And so far from the blog post, really, it looks really cool uh, with things like being able to share, to, to use different uh, cargo space for different things. You know, there's, there's a few different ones. I, I'm not going to go into details until they release it. When they release it, I will definitely share with you all everything. So this will be the up one. Then this one will be the down one. Just a few. Shouldn't have a lot of trains on that road, but just in case. Also, if we use it for something else in the future, it's just a good practice. I know there is a mode to post, to, you know, put all of these uh, signals automatically. Um, but yeah, just here we're playing without any modes. So let's see in a while if that's working well. In the meantime, let's talk about a few other things. Another food production. And here I want to show you that food doesn't have to be just with trucks like we did over here. I'm doing with trains. You have a farm over here, which is the only farm we're not using from that corner here. Because anyway, we are at the maximum here. Right? Like this is 800, this is the maximum we can deliver. There's no point in connecting this one over here. So I decided to start connecting these over here. So we're going to have a train that will go over here. There's also a tunnel there, uh, a bridge, and it will deliver to that food processing plant here. And then this food, from this food processing plant, we'll have another train that will go back, deliver into the station here for Pomona. It could also be used in the future if we need more bread we could also continue that line to deliver back into Stratity. Because if you look at Stratity, you know, this is slowly increasing here, but we are actually probably going to need more than what we're producing over here in, in the end state. So it could be good to also use that one. Versus, and you know, we have other farm, for example, we have those two other farms here, where I could also put train station here and then just deliver quickly over here. Versus for all those farms over here, I think again, we're going to put a train station or maybe an airport and then deliver it to that one here, which will then be used for those two cities, Independence and Temecula. If you want one of those cities to be named after you, jump in the comments below, share and I will do so. So anyway, that food processing plant, uh, we can start. The one thing though is, let's see when we buy a train, any train, or let's look at the cargo instead, let's say, this one cannot transport brain or a grain or bread. This one can only transport bread. And this one can only transport grain. So actually, we can't really have the same train doing this and then when it arrives there, uh, delivers and then picks up and comes back. You, I mean, you can, but you still need two different cargo wagons and therefore you're going to be half empty all the time. So it's not that great. It will be, you know, one line that goes like this and like this and then another line that just focus on this. And for the fuel, I had also forgotten to do this, which is to buy actually trucks on this road to go from the fuel station to depot, um, but it needs to go through there. You start over here. First it goes there, then it goes there, and then you go again over here, please. Perfect. That way we're going to avoid all this uh, residential center over here. This is making the road a bit longer. So we're gonna make a bit less money but that's important to maximize our growth that's gonna be cargo fuel city intra versus the other one was just to get to pit city 
So hopefully now this hold will start working well. We can try to find a, a train going up this way soon. We are inside of grain, new grain train going at 80 km per hour, which remember is the limit for wag wagons. We're transporting 60 grain and let's see how much we're gonna make. This is quite a long road, so I'm expecting some good money. What is happening here? A small visual bug here at the exit. We're almost at the station. Let's see how much that's gonna make us. one point one million that's pretty good in the next episode of course we're going to optimize those routes for the fuel over here and for the grain and then bread into pomona we're going to start that we'll also start this one over here which is the very funny one a lot of other things planned of course not is that to share in the comments again if you have questions thoughts I'd love to hear about it and i hope to see you next time